always a cat. Hey there, everybody. Welcome back to the Pike Homestead. I'm Adam, and I just wanted to talk a little bit today about, uh, <clears throat> well, about what it's like to own chickens. And more specifically, uh, what you'd need to have your own backyard chickens. So we all know how, uh, how it is nowadays with the price of eggs and everything skyrocketing due to the, uh, due to the avian flu problems with the egg industry. <clears throat> so, you know, now is probably the best time for people to get into having some own chickens in their backyard. And in fact, we're looking at doing a chicken rental program here in our little community. Um, but, you know, that's still on the, uh, on the to-do list just to get things kind of planned and set up. So, if you want to have chickens, what do you need to do? What do you need to know? First of all, you need to know where you live, what you're allowed to have. Um, because if you're in an urban area, there are going to be bylaws or possibly uh, HOAs that you have to deal with to make it okay for you to have chickens on your property. Now, a lot of people will say the noise is a problem and everything like that, but <laughs> hens by themselves don't make a heck of a lot of noise. They will uh, sing their songs when they, when they lay their eggs, but there's no early morning crowing or anything like that. Uh, and they can be fairly easy and quiet for, you know, uh, during the nighttime hours. Uh, there's really nothing you need to worry about in that regard. So, I know here, in the hamlet closest to us right now, they're actually looking at reviewing um, the laws around having chickens in your backyard in the urban area. Now, out here in the country, I mean, we're blessed, we've got tons of space. So it's easy, we can have as many as we want, and roosters and everything. So, you know, we're, uh, we're kind of set up for that, but you know, they're, they're looking at changing that for the people in the town itself, just a half hour from us here. And so we've got our voice in on that to say, you know, we support it and this is why. Um, and there's a number of benefits to having your own backyard chickens. So what are a few of the benefits of having backyard chickens? Um, I think on our Facebook page, Sustainable Homesteading, um, we posted an article a while back about a place, I think it was in Finland, where they had made uh, backyard chickens available to pretty much everybody. Um, and they found that if one in three households had backyard chickens, um, you know, nobody wanted for eggs or food um, in the area, because you always had eggs available, uh, and chickens if they get to that age. Um, and another thing they found that was really interesting was actually a drastic drop in the amount of food waste because rather than throwing it away, you feed it to your chickens and turn it into eggs. Uh, and so there's all the pylon effects and things like that. Um, also better, uh, better fertilizer and everything like that, better grass and everything in your yards, better pest control, okay? Because chickens will, you know, they will actually take out something Hello, Nina. There's always a cat. Um, they will take out something as, as large as a small mouse. Um, and to say nothing about the amounts of, uh, of fly and bug larva that they slaughter. Um, you know, not on the scale of, say, a guinea hen, but they still will eat a lot and reduce the number of bugs and everything around the whole area. So if you have enough in your urban area, these are all the benefits that you can have. Um, so if, if you are in an area that's considering allowing them, that these are some good points to bring up. So the next question that's going to come up is, what do you need for size for chickens? Um, so, and there's two things you need to keep in mind on, on what spacing you need for chickens. One is space inside the coop, because you don't want them to be in the coop all the time. If you want healthy, fresh, you know, homegrown eggs, you want them outside, you want them in the grass, you want them eating those bugs, eating that grass and getting that sunlight. That will give you far healthier and tastier eggs. Now, so what you need inside the coop is you need to have three to five square foot per bird. Um, so 
a lot of you have joined us, found us through that video where I made that 4x8 coupe. And that was enough for roughly about a dozen. Again, these numbers are all rough, like, you make it to, you know, the size of the materials you have as close as you can to what is the perfect ideal. And the chickens won't mind. Now, in the coop, you also need to know how much roost space to have. And, you know, the, you should have enough roost space to have about one foot per bird along the roost. In colder weather, they will, you know, cuddle right up next to each other. And even when it's warmer out, they'll just sit right next to each other. So they'll need roughly about a foot each. Uh, so, if you're looking at having chickens and building a coop for them, that is, those are your basic stats right there for what you need. You need to know how many chickens you're having, and that will tell you how much space you need and what you need to build to support them. Then you get to the run space. So for that, you want to have a little bit more space for them to run around. Uh, and for that, you want to be looking at about eight to 10 square foot per bird, if not more. Um, now, for things like that, you know, going along with what I said about uh, about having them outside in the grass, is you want to look at having a coop that you can move. Um, because having a static coop means that the grass in that spot will be dead. It will be dirt and chicken poop, and there won't be a lot of bugs for them to be eating after so long. So ideally, if you can, you're going to have a coop that's big enough to support your birds and for a backyard flock you only need about three birds and that will give you enough eggs for a family of five each week. Um, so you know you, you want to have, have it be big enough that you can support the three to four birds which you know again a four by eight kind of run is perfect. You just have to have it you know two feet up uh, and close it in a cage and it'll be perfectly safe. Um, and you have it light enough for you to be able to move, but heavy enough that, you know, critters can't get under it. Uh, and you'll be, you'll be fine. Um, and then you just move it every other day or so. Um, and the chickens will have fresh grass. They will have fresh bugs. They will still have access to fresh air and, and sunlight. And they'll be happy, healthy birds. And you'll have good, fresh, uh, tasty eggs. Now, to go along with the spacing, you also need to know about heights and everything, like how high do you put your roosts off the ground? Well, you start at about 18 inches and go up. Uh, you've seen in my barn, our roosts, I mean, it's a big barn, we got lots of space, lots of hens. Uh, you know, it goes all the way up to about five, six feet. And we've got a bar, I mean, they, the roost itself and, and the structure for it was made before we got here. So the bars are only about 12 inches maybe apart, but that's enough. So, you know, they don't roost on all the bars. They tend to climb as high as they can, and that's where they will sleep. Uh, so with things like this and for nesting boxes, you, again, you want them to be about 18 inches off the ground. What you have to keep in mind is uh, chickens are ground birds but they are very vulnerable on the ground. So when they're at their most vulnerable, when they're sleeping, they want to be up off the ground in the trees, on the roofs. So that's what you want to keep in mind when you're designing or looking to purchase a coop for your own backyard chickens. Uh, so, um, then also to lay your eggs, <clears throat> what do you need as far as uh, nesting boxes? Well. You need about a nesting box per three birds. So if you're going to have three or four birds, you need maybe two. And what do you need for a nesting box? Well, it needs to be off the ground. And again, them being, uh, being ground birds and liking to be secure and stuff, well, again, they're vulnerable when they're laying. So they want something that's kind of closed in. Ideally off the ground. It doesn't have to be. But ideally, they'll be up off the ground about 18 inches. And... Uh, and then they'll have, you know, even just a square foot, although you might want to try for two square feet just to give them space. Uh, sometimes you'll have two hop in one box. It's okay. Um, but even just a milk crate that you cut the side off of 
will do the job. Um, that gives them plenty of space and they can hop in and feel secure with the walls around them and hopefully a roof on top. And they'll be happy laying their eggs. Uh, you know, you see a lot of a lot of YouTubers, like especially Justin Rhodes, you look at some of his setups for his, uh, for his mobile coops and everything, they're, they're fantastic for this sort of thing. Um, not necessarily in the enclosed manner that you probably need for the city, because again, you want them in an enclosed coop with a lid and everything, because otherwise, your chickens are going to be visiting the neighbors. Um, when we first got into doing chickens, we were told that they won't go more than a hundred feet from their coop. This is not true. We've had them all around here, uh, going up three, four hundred feet away from where their coop and, and their roosts are in the barn. If they feel safe and secure, they're going to wander. And well, I mean, they also have a rooster with them who helps them feel more secure because they're the ones keeping their eyes up looking around for predators. But if you've got just hens, they tend to get focused on eating and they're always down pecking, not looking around unless something grabs their attention. So it's best to have them in an enclosed coop with a lid so your neighbors aren't complaining. Uh, and you know, you can also control then where they're grazing, what they're doing and kind of focus it because that chicken poop will make your grass greener than your neighbors before you know it. Um, and so it's definitely worthwhile uh, to put the time and effort into that. Now, as far as feeding the chickens and watering your chickens, what do you need? Well, if you're gonna have three or four chickens, all you need, you need a gallon feeder and a gallon waterer, and you only need to change it every couple of days. It doesn't take much, um, you know, for that few chickens. Um, you know, like we were changing it daily before we had to upgrade our, both our feeder and our waterer here um, because it was getting to the point where I was having to change it twice daily. But, you know, we also have 40 odd birds in there right now. Um, and even still, when they're hungry, they are going through the feed in about two days. So, you know, but if you've got three, four birds, uh, you can go two, maybe three days as long as you're keeping an eye on it. You know, if you're, you can just make it a task where every couple of days when you move the coop, you just fill up the feed and water and they're good. Um, you know, there are things to look at. Like if you're looking at a mobile coop, even look at uh, what Joe Salatin does with his. Um, they don't need to be as big because you're not doing a hundred meat birds at a time here. You're just doing three or four um, laying hens. Uh, but laying hens do like a bit more space than the meat birds because they will tend to wander or be willing to wander a lot farther. Um, so you want to keep that in mind. <clears throat> so I was saying, you know, like if you can do just a four by eight run with a coop raised up on one end for three or four birds, you'd be, you'd be set up. Uh, that way they'd have access to sun and grass. Uh, they'd have a safe place to sleep at night that's raised off the ground. And they'd also have a place to shelter underneath it in bad weather. Um, which, you know, again, is ideal. Like, look online, look on Amazon. There's tons of them out there um, that are fairly easy to, to lift and move because they're not too heavy and you can just slide them along. Uh, just take care not to pinch your chickens. Um, and yeah, that should be about all you need. Uh, you know what you need for roosts and space for it. You, need, you know what you need for space in the coop and out of the coop. You know what you need for feed and water. Um, well, that brings me to feed. <clears throat> any standard laying feed, any layer feed will work. And depending on your, uh, your preferences, if you want gluten and soy free feed, uh, you can get it, it's out there, it's just a little bit more expensive and it just comes down to the dollars and cents on whether that makes sense for you for your chickens. Um, there's no real health detriment to laying birds, especially if they have access to outside grass and bugs and everything like that. Um, so just standard, regular, everyday, you know, layer feed. You don't need to mess with the non-GMO stuff to get healthy eggs. Um, so, you know, especially as a lot of people are going to be taking this on as a, as a cost reduction, you don't need to spend tons of money on the fancy food if it's not, if it doesn't matter to you. If it matters to you, then yeah, you know, uh, 18 kilogram bag, you'll probably be, I don't know, about $5 more expensive on average uh so but that adds up over time but again for three or four birds 
That bag is going to last you probably, probably at least a month. So, you know, there's, there's benefits to, you know, doing that. If you want to do it cheap, then it's great. It's easy, but it's also not going to cost you a heck of a lot more per month to get your eggs. So anyway, uh, I hope this helps you if you're interested in, in starting your own flock at your home uh, to help, you know, produce your own eggs and everything. Honestly, it's really rewarding and it, it definitely, you know, chickens definitely are the gateway drug to homesteading. Um, you know, like we were already wanting to do this. We got our chickens and then we were sold. Like we were, we're gone and finding our farm and moving here and getting more chickens. Um, so yeah, anyway, I hope this is helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed the information. Um, you know, it's still going to be a while here for us. We're probably going to have snow on the ground for another couple of weeks here. We're at the start of March. Uh, it's a nice cold day right now. Uh, we're floating around, what, minus 20 Celsius today. Uh, so it's been chilly out helping our neighbors and, and doing stuff here, cleaning up in the barn. But anyway, our chickens are happy. They are laying more than we, they've ever laid before. Uh, so what we're doing is working, and uh, and I hope you can take some time uh, and learn from what we've learned, um, and start your own coop. Another bit of advice, actually, is especially if you're in a colder climate, you also need to make sure that you have um, heat and light for them in the winter. Um, so if they're going to be in an enclosed coop, you want to make sure that they have light in there, um, because light is uh something that helps move along their their laying um so the biggest thing that we did like one of the biggest changes we did if you watch our videos on the uh the big transformation we did in our barn for the for the new chicken coop this year uh one of the biggest changes i did was put in some lights and i put in some uh some you know sun equivalent ball or sun equivalent led uh four foot lights in there for this very reason, um, because sunlight is a big driver for how much chickens are laying. So they'll still lay through the winter without it, but nowhere near as much. Whereas right now, our production is, it seems like from the numbers of eggs I'm getting, it's exactly the way it was in the summer when they're getting 18 hours of sunlight. Um, you know, so light is a big key, especially if you're in a colder climate like us, where you really can't have them outside for months of the year. Uh, if you're, <clears throat> but even if you're in, you know, say, you know, around the 49th parallel and stuff like that, you know, northern U.S. or southern Canada, where it doesn't get quite as cold, especially on the coast, um, at least the west coast, um, you know, you're still going to want them, you know, it's still going to be cold, and you don't want them getting too cold. Um, so as long as your coop is dry and small for that many birds, you should be all right. Um, but it wouldn't hurt to have a, a heater, and you can buy those you know, anywhere that you can get the coops, you can find a coop heater. And it's just be a little plug-in heater that you stick on the wall and it keeps it warm. Same thing that you'd get for, say, an outside doghouse or something like that. Um, <clears throat> they're cheap. They're not too intense on the power draw. Um, and they do just enough to keep it warm enough for the birds not to get frostbite. Um, but one thing you do want to make sure you have is good airflow uh, because you have the warmth in there, so that will cause possibly condensation and it's the condensation that will kill your birds um, they get it on the combs and on the feet and that's when you get the frostbite when they go outside uh, so that's that's definitely a thing you want to keep an eye on uh, make sure you've got good airflow so it stays dry as possible inside the coop when you've got a heater in there in winter especially you know in really cold areas where it's going to make a big difference all right so anyway i hope you've enjoyed my uh again my blah of thoughts about this uh, I did write a bunch of notes down, and I think I covered them all off. <laughs> but, you know, it's, uh, you know, I also had some pop-up that I hadn't thought of as I was talking about it. So, you know, it's it's uh, it's good just to blather sometimes, because then you get more information.
Now this, this is actually a guinea egg. So we think our, uh, our guineas have started laying. We're getting, you know, at least an egg a day. We're still not sure whether they're males or females. But their eggs are tasty too. So fun fact about the guineas is apparently you can actually, you know, if you have a rooster like we do, you can actually end up getting a cross. Um, and most of the eggs fail, but they might not. So they're, they've come to laying eggs and if, uh, if good old Mr. Penguin in his, uh, in his tuxedo there is talking up the ladies, then well, we might get some interesting things happening. Um, we're going to give it a little time and then maybe, uh, maybe try to see if some will, uh, will start growing. And so, you know, we'll, uh, we'll document that here if we do. Um, so be sure to check here and, and, uh, find out how it goes. Anyway, this is Adam again from the Pike Homestead where there's always a cat everywhere. Um, and thanks for spending your time with me today. Again, I hope you find this useful and, uh, you know, like, and subscribe, follow along. We've got more content coming and it's going to be a real busy year for us. And we'd love to have you come along for the ride. All right. Thank you. Have a good day.